Hello and welcome to the Global Fleet Voices video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine, which puts a spotlight on key events um, that are occurring in today's fleet management industry. And today I'm going to be speaking with Ralph Morton, the European correspondent for Automotive Fleet Magazine, who will share with us details about a recent merger between Mitsubishi and Hitachi and the global implications of this merger to the international fleet market. So with that, uh, let me welcome you, Ralph. Hello, Mike. Thank you for having me on today. Yes. Uh, yes, Mike. It's, it's, this uh, is big it's, news, isn't it? Well I, well, I think it is. I think it's sort of hit its light under a bushel, really. And it came to my attention when Hitachi Capital Vehicle Solutions in the UK announced that they were going to be known forthwith as Novuna Vehicle Solutions. And that'll be from April uh, April 2022. Um, but digging a bit deeper, it, it, it's, I, I found that this merger between the uh, Hitachi Capital Corporation and um, what in fact was Mitsubishi UFJ Lease and Finance Company has created an absolute powerhouse. What I didn't realize, Mike, was that this Mitsubishi company, uh, the holding bank, MUFG, which, by the way, has nothing to do with the car maker, mm. is the fourth largest bank in the world. Now, that's, that's, significant. that's really significant. Um, so the three banks ahead of it are Chinese. The bank after it is Chinese. And then, then you've got HSBC. So that gives you uh, a, a, an idea of how big it is. Uh, BMP Paribas, which a, a lot of our viewers will, will know through Arval, um, they are in ninth place. And uh, Society Generale, uh, which owns uh, ALD, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're down in a, a 18th place. So mm -hmm. it's a huge entity. So it gives it enormous firepower, which is what I hadn't really understood. And, and, and this gives... Um, what will be called Novuna in, in the UK. And of course, confusingly for Europe, it will be Mitsubishi HC Capital in Europe. So you look out for that in, in, in Europe. It gives it great firepower. So it can go ahead with a lot of its um, green initiatives. Now, for example, uh, Mike, they've, in the UK, they've been um, developing Mits, uh, Hitachi, this strong um, green agenda, promoting electric vehicles. And uh, they've also invested uh, 20% in a company called GridServe, you know, mm -hmm. with a cool sort of 48 million pounds. And GridServe are quite an innovative company. They're building these um, electric hubs, which will, or they call them electric forecourts in actual fact. They'll feature something like 36 uh, chargers. And they reckon you can fill up um, you can get 200 miles in 20 minutes. And that's going to make a huge difference to EV ownership. But the other thing that GridServe is doing with this Hitachi money is buying up what well, they bought, um, the old electric highway, which was owned by Ecotricity. Now, when it started, it was a great idea that you'd have these charges all the way up the motorway network of the UK. Fantastic, except they didn't have very much money. They didn't sustain them. When EV drivers came to them, they'd often find that they were out of order, not working. So they got quite a bad name. Now, GridServe had taken over Ecotricity, and they're replacing these charges really quickly with new ultra-rapid charges. So far, they've replaced 100 by, uh, by the end of September. And, uh, and we expect by the end of 2022 to replace all of them, which will be terrific. It'll be such a big boon for, for fleet drivers in, uh, in, in the UK, Mike. Mm -hmm. and, and there's still a long way to go in order to fully electrify the market. I, I believe the, uh, the country goal in the UK to go all electric is 2035, 2030? <laughs> Yeah, that, that's correct, Mike. So from 2030, uh, the government has said they will ban the sale of all petrol and diesel vehicles. So there must be some form of electrification. So whether it's a plug-in hybrid or it's fully electric, um, that's, that's, that's the deal. From 2035, it's got to be pure electric or mm -hmm. fuel cell. 
uh, that's that that's what they're saying and that's not only uh, for cars that's for vans too uh, mike Correct. so up to three and a half tons so it's it's an ambitious target but well, i'd say and it, gets, the, and it gets back to what you're saying earlier ralph it, it is an ambitious target but you need the financial firepower in order to pull this off in order to um uh roll out this infrastructure that's going to be needed to service that many vehicles well, well yeah, I, you're absolutely right there, Mike. And, and, and this is what I think is so exciting about this, uh, this tie up between the Mitsubishi Bank and Hitachi is because suddenly you have a, a group here that has the absolute firepower, the financial wherewithal to be able to do this. So, you know, to, to put up these electric forecourts, I've, there's four more currently uh, going up at the moment. Um, it's, it's going to be terrific. And then you have uh, Nuvona uh, Vehicle Solutions in the UK promoting electric vehicles to their leasing customers. One, one, one can only assume at very good leasing rates mm -hmm. because they can buy so much better. Then you have a really, really uh, great push towards uh, electrification in the UK. And, 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 and Go ahead. By the way, Mike, I'm just 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 on that point, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, in the UK in September, we had the biggest ever point. market. Oh, sorry, Mike. I, no, yeah, no, go so, ahead. So yeah, so we had the biggest ever market share for uh, electric vehicles, over fifteen percent. That's true. Terrific. That's significant. Yeah. Now, I th there were certain elements affecting this, Mike. So I think you know we have to adjust our view on this. But you know, for example. The Tesla Model 3 was the best-selling vehicle overall, but that's partly because Tesla load up the end of quarter with vehicle deliveries. And also, of course, there was, um, you know, we are still at, at, uh, at a disadvantage with the uh, semiconductor issue. So, you know, we've got lack of cars. So manufacturers are prioritizing either high-end SUVs or electric vehicles. So again, that sort of skews the market. But hey, let's not take away from it. You know, electric vehicles are, are, are really here and they're here to stay. And taking that percentage of the market is, is really quite something, Mike. Very good. Well, this is um, very important news. Thank you for bringing it to our attention, Ralph. And keep us posted as, this, uh, as they unveil and uh, evolve in the UK uh, electrification transition. I certainly will do, Mike, and thank you for having me today.